Oh, hey, Angel, Angel, we're on. Come on. Oh, dude. oh, oh, man. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Uh, look, hey. uh, I am Angel Espino. I'm Cuban B. Yes, Cuban and, B. And, uh, gentlemen, today is a very uh, special day for everybody involved, not just the watchers, but you guys also on the call because we have a very good friend of mine who's been around for a very long time. He's a legend. This gentleman has worked for Marvel and Image Comics. He's Brian J.L. Glass. is going to be with us in a little bit. I'm super right. excited about this. Gerald, take it away, my friend. Okay. Hello, everyone. Yes, I am Gerald Holcomb, your defender of liberty and freedom. Freedom! And I am so ready to do this new episode of Rabbit Punch. So I, I, I'm, I'm excited to be able to spend some more time with you. And of course, share my love and devotion to the greatest living president, or about to be president again, Donald J. Trump. And I know there remains some, uh, oh, I guess you'd say technicalities uh, before he can be reinstated at the White House in August. Uh, of course, some people in the liberal media will try and stop this from happening. You're going to hear them say our great leader lost fair and square in November and, uh, at that election and that he's a poor sport and won't accept defeat. Well, i got to tell you something. I would describe him as a winner who knows he can't be beat unless the other team cheats. And like I said last week, thank God for the soon-to-be recounts in all 50 states, even the ones he won. As we all know, he won by a lot more than the totals put out there by the deep state Come election on. officials. It's true. And when it gets right down to it, why do we... Why do we choose our president by asking regular people to decide? I don't know about you, but take a look around. Do you feel comfortable allowing your uh, poorly informed fellow citizens to take this responsibility on? I think not. We should have a group of people, highly esteemed people, select who is best to serve. I, I know I'd feel comfortable with that uh, kind of setup. And uh, Angel, how about you? What do you think? I think... It'd be actually. I think August would be awesome if it actually happens. I'm not holding my breath because I don't want to turn blue like our friend Spud over here. Spud, you know you it's happening. Take it away. It's called. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mark uh, my words. Well, greetings. I am Spud Goodman. All right. <laughs> the uh, Spud you man. Know, and Gerald. Uh, what can I say? Uh, you, yeah. you can't have a democracy uh, by allowing a select group of people uh, deciding who's the leader. Uh, that's kind of undemocratic, don't you think? Well, no, because sometimes for the good of the people, you have to make adjustments to how things work. You know, if you want the best results, and we all want what's best for America, right? We all want to support Donald Trump in his attempt to make America great again. These guys, they make millions of dollars. They're smart as hell. Uh, we were great prior to 2016, and uh, we're great again now in 2020, or at least trying to be great again. Those last four years... Uh, I gotta say, we're a little rocky, to say the least. Uh, I think you could use the word cluster f uh, But anyway, let's get this show started, as I, as I have stuff to do after we're done. What, y y anything more important than saving this country? Uh, more important than uh, writing an injustice? Uh, more important than uh, setting the record sta straight and honoring this great man? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I have my Tinker Toy skyscraper to finish, all right? And don't don't laugh. I'm serious. It's it's about it's about to be 26 stories high, and that I took a, a hell of a lot of Tinker Toys, right? All um, right, you guys. Know, thanks guys. to video games. No, I'm gonna say this: kids these days hate to build stuff. So I just want to tell the people that are watching, you can pick them up really cheap on eBay now. Nobody wants them. I mean. You know, the kids, I'm saying, so... Yeah, yeah. okay, all right. Hey, you know what? It's nice you're building your own Trump Tower, but why does a grown yes. man play with Tinker Toys? Because guys, I never had enough of them as a kid, all right? It, it, I could never build anything the toys. Cool. Enough no, of the toys. No, I'm just saying to the that people, that people are interested. I know people are interested in, in building stuff, you know, and, and I use Tinker Toys. It's just, it's my it's my mode to express myself artistically and architecturally. So, right. and anyway... And I'm considering to do maybe a super mall next, if you know. And you know, it, it sounds a lot get like enough it anchor sounds tent like to keep Trump. It going, you know, when the times get down. He sounds you know, a lot like Trump, doesn't he, Gerald? He's yeah, he does. He's a builder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I Tell pay my people, that. me. But oh. anyway, all right, let's go. All right, guys. Topic number one: Are white people 
A, mistreated. B, victims. C, oppressed. And I'm going to go first. Being the non-white guy here in the Cuban. I'm, I'm Cuban. Go first. I think that this is white man's burden. If you guys remember that movie, we're living through it, gentlemen. This is not a joke. We're right now in a moment where we're being taught critical race theory and everything's out the window when it comes to race relation in this country. And I am going with the, you know, white people are being oppressed. And it's all because the left has uh, made it easy for white people to hate themselves. It's an, uh, a crazy thing. Uh, Gerald, I know it's you understand me. what I'm saying. For many years. Yeah. My therapist has made a lot of money because of it. Well, there you go. He, yeah. He's telling the truth there. But, yeah. Angel, I'm so glad you brought this topic up because it's one I've given a lot of thought to lately. After watching mm -hmm. Tucker Carlson. And maybe I don't want to live in a country that looks nothing like the country I grew up in. Is that bigoted? On his new streaming show on Fox uh, Nation, uh, lay it out clearly. I don't think there's any doubt that my fellow white citizens have now become victims of discrimination and right. they're trying to they're trying to replace us and it's very painful to say but it's true for instance i, I can't tell you how painful it is uh, to be yeah, referred you're to okay you're pained as listen when I hear somebody call me white, Preach, brother, Preach, white, the and my my paper Preach. boy, my paper boy, the other day was evidently angry that we hadn't gotten around to paying for the last couple of months. But wait so a sec, he, wait a sec, is that that's the same paper boy who called into our radio show, right? He was rag, oh. he ragged on you heavily. Um, yeah, uh, let that me was ask bad, you. That he was bad, he yeah. sent me a friend request later. That that kid is white. All right, he's kind of an old soul because he has a Facebook page at his age. But what are you so, talking about? No, I know, I know, I know he's white, but he identifies as uh, I, I don't know uh, what the politically correct term is. But let's go with none of the above. And uh, my gosh, that kid—he's got quite an attitude. Uh, you see, online he seemed like a normal teenager to me. I mean, I if know. I was his age and and I had you as a customer. Uh, I would send you a strong message too, like being late, you know, paying for the paper was unacceptable. Not, you know, not like leave a horse's head in, in your bed or anything, but at least egg or toilet paper your place uh, a few times until you got, you know, your account in order. Yes, uh, well, okay, R regardless, regardless, let me say clearly, white people are an oppressed group these oh days. <laughs> That's true. You can even, you, you, you can even say you guys are victims and oppressed. You know what, uh, Angel? I think that's right. And uh, I got to tell you, I think that Tucker Carlson has begun a movement that will someday soon, if yep. not in my lifetime, then in my children's lifetime, see the day where white people will be treated fairly and with the degree of respect that they so deeply deserve. Oh, with, and I'll, and uh, I'll tell you what, Spud, yep. when that day does come, there's going to be a great deal of guilt felt by the rest of non-white America. And, yep. you know, many people will have to grapple with their conscience about labeling white Americans as selfish and arrogant. And I, I think the term so often used is entitled. I'm so sick of that yep. word. Wait, what is entitlement? Should I feel bad about being successful or having a beautiful home with listen, a, a listen, yard? Uh, listen, I don't know how being a temporary permanent co-host on, a, let's face it, obscure radio show like ours, could could be termed successful career wise. Uh, I'm just okay. saying. But please don't interrupt me while I'm laying out the case but that white Americans need to join together oh, and make you. their strength known. Temporary, permanent, and by organizing, we need to organize uh, by speaking out against current injustices by trying to uh, right the ship before it goes down to the bottom of the sea. Yeah, and going with the, the country as a sinking ship, uh, you know, in the ocean is really kind of a weak metaphor, uh, if you ask me. I just gotta, gotta be honest. Well, again, yeah. okay, please, Spud, let me continue. There is a very real possibility that in the next few decades, white people will be a forgotten segment in this country, basically uh, <laughs> invisible. And, and we can't let this happen. We as a people came here to the shores of Plymouth Rock in the 1600s on the Nina, the Pinto, and the Santa Barbara. And they, di uh, listen, well, they didn't that's undergo that horrible voyage just to be ignored a few hundred years later. <laughs> no, Actually, we're not, not going to stand yeah. for this. Joe, not only are you right, but uh, they also make awesome hot sauce 
Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, that's good yeah. to know. You yes. know, uh, we uh, poor white people are about to be canceled. Huh? That's kind of what I hear right. you, you know, you're saying. Uh, yeah, I well, here's how all. I see it, okay? I, I think Native Americans would have the best perspective on, on this. Uh, you remember those European dudes who uh, landed at Plymouth Rock that you mentioned? Uh, yeah. yeah, well, they brought a, like a buttload of diseases with them and wiped out a, a lot of the original population of this country, the non-whites, okay? So um, now and, it's now okay that is really happen. canceling. That is canceling yeah. permanently. But, but now it's happening at, at our border where the illegals crossing with the, the unknown virus. We don't know where it came from. China. But whatever. Yeah, yeah okay. You know, well, yeah. they're coming in sick. Some are good people. Some are bad. Some are rapists. Some are... Uh, uh, but, uh, you know... A lot of them are sick. That's not. But good. let's let's be honest. White guys have been the main players uh, since those dudes landed on shore, and also the referees. Also, I mean, we white guys, you know, have had it pretty good. So, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I think Tucker Carlson and his buddies at Fox News should just be grateful that we've had this, you know, this situation this long with total control and all levers of power. But nothing lasts forever. Uh, in America, demographics change, you know, uh, and and you just have to roll with it. Our our country, or you know, our, our other countries, let's just say, uh, in, in history, uh, ha, have tried to control their uh, population, the makeup of their population, and all their efforts ended uh, not so well. That that History Channel is is full of those stories. We can't have open borders, you know, for sure. But natural population growth, you know, from legal immigration is nothing to fear unless our, our goal is that master race thingy. So, you know, we, we just can't turn our backs on, you know, on Eastern European semi-supermodels. Think Must about spread. that. The trophy wife supply. There are certain men, important but, men. Angel, you know this. One of the men I'm speaking of, they rely on this form of human trafficking. So, hey. Yeah, Joe Biden. stupid topic. But, I'm done. But anyway. All right, guys, check it out now. It's time to get our guest on for the evening, the one and only uh, Mr. Brian J.L. Glass. As you guys know, I'm a big comic book nerd, and this gentleman has worked for Marvel Image. He has a mm. great line right now, which is, uh, you know, one of my favorites uh, th that he's worked on for years, Furious nice. and uh, Quixote, uh, the uh, Mice Templars, and we're going to find out about Dark Spaces. This guy's worked mm -hmm. on everything from uh, Thor, First Thunder, and Valkyrie. Born in the city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, but he's known worldwide for his amazing work. The one and only Brian J. L. Glass is here on Rabbit Punch. What's so going to come in, Rabbit Punching? Hello, love it's good it. to be here. Love it. I now, well, there we go. With that said, I, I do get the honor of having the first question for uh, Mr. Glass, right, guys? You know, yeah, let's get into it. Let's go. Okay, okay. First question. Now, as you know, I love your work, but I want to know, you know, non-comic book uh, related, what sci-fi movie have you seen in your life or show uh, that you would think would make a great graphic novel and would you like to work for them? And, you know, ah, okay, I, I, I was warned about this one coming in and I said I had an elaborate answer. I'll try to keep it as concise as possible. But uh, my view is there's books, there's comics, there's movies, there's radio, there's stage plays. They're all variations of media. And but my business is storytelling. And so uh, I'm OK with a non visual medium like a book or even mm -hmm. a, a comic being adapted for film. But that idea of a of a film, no matter how cool, like if, if the visuals are already safely ensconced on film or digital, to then, oh, well now we're gonna, I don't wanna say bring it a step back, but it's more like uh, we've gotten one, we've gotten the director and cinematographer's view of the visuals and now we're going to task an artist in another medium. When if you adapt a comic from a novel, uh, a novel is not visual. You create the imagery in your head. So when a novel becomes a comic or a novel becomes a movie, those uh, visual artisans bring that, that dynamic impact. But I really, I just, uh, the, all the gears on my bike lock up when I ponder taking 
the visuals that already exist and oh now let's bring them back and do them as a comic if you've it's got like a reverse certain, engineering right it's like reverse engineering it, yeah in a way like if you have an artist like a, a bill sinkevich uh like someone who is really incredibly dynamic who can uh take an already established visual and breathe brand new life into it like, like create a, a an image that movies could not even capture with all today's CGI or even in the old days, the optical effects. Um, I, 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 I would enjoy things like that. I, I did enjoy Sienkiewicz's adaptation of David Lynch's Dune back in the 80s. Uh, but there were some panels that you could tell, well, he was following, these are the production stills. But then there were other pages where he really he brought what he was known for and made what was otherwise a uh, here's just the movie tie-in comic right and he truly turned that into a piece of art hey uh, no. excuse me i'd like to cut in line because gerald's supposed to go next but all right, all right let's just follow the rules gerald you're up next let's go me, gerald, me. you ready <laughs> okay i'm i'm ready i'm ready all uh, right there we go uh my my first question is uh brian I was thinking yeah. the other day that uh, the uh, Marvel people or or maybe a, another comic book publisher should really consider doing one on the greatest president in U.S. history, Donald J. Trump. I mean, who, who would be a better superhero than him? He already has miraculous powers in real life. And just think what stories could be told about his awesomeness. Uh, people of all ages would love this comic. Who needs a cape when you got the big red tie and the cat? Amen to that. Oh my I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> All I right. couldn't have said it better. Well, uh, it's my it. turn. It's my turn. On a related note, uh, one one of the comic books that you create, the, the, temp, the Mice Templar, excuse me, yes. uh, there's an evil tyrant king, uh, King Icarus, I believe. You know, we came yes. very close to, to also having our own evil tyrant king in this country. Uh, his lackey attorney general, uh, William Barr, came close to making it happen. So my question is this. Do you pull anything from the headlines in creating, like, maybe that character or anything else? Well, I actually try not to. Uh, that's one of the reasons I love working in fantasy and sci-fi or just purely created worlds. Because for, for every person who then cheers you on, you have someone on the opposite side then condemning you. Um, funny thing about uh, King Icarus, when the book, when issue one of Mice Templar debuted, it debuted at Baltimore Comic Con 2007. And in issue one, there's talk in the little village that later gets destroyed about there is this very unpopular king in a distant capital and everyone has an opinion on him. And the weekend that the book debuted, I'm sitting there at the convention and a guy comes up and says, yeah, I, I picked up the book yesterday. I read it last night. And I was wondering if you were insinuating that this was George Bush. And I went, uh, no, he's the evil mouse king. <laughs> and then literally two years later at a Chicago on C2E2, a guy walked up and said, I really like the Mice Templar, but uh, you've introduced this Icarus guy, and are you making an Obama statement? And me and Mike Oming, Mike Oming's my co-creator, we just laugh, and our, our stock answer is, they're mice! Okay, I got you. That, yeah, okay. You're on the record on that now. All right, super. Not everything yeah. is political oh, no. there, uh, you know? Not everything is super political, uh, you know, uh, Spud. Well, some of us are professional journalists, and they have a job to do. It's back to you right now. Do you have another question? <laughs> true. This is true. So, chances are we're not going to get a, uh, you know, uh, Back to the Future, Bill and Ted version comic book from you. That's understandable. Uh, <laughs> but here's the thing. Now, you know, I, like I said earlier, I'm a huge fan of the Mice Templars. Uh, it's one of my favorites of yours, and it needs to be adapted somehow, either streaming, movies, whatever, Brian. you got to make it happen, man. Yep. But I want to know more about Dark Spaces, because this is uh, something right up my alley, and I, ah. I want to hear more about this, my friend. Tell us about Dark Spaces. Dark Spaces is a, is a space opera. Our evil government is more of a uh, totalitarian bureaucracy. 
everything is mired in bureaucracy. And the story starts with just a collection of six incredibly dysfunctional people that probably, if left to their own devices, would uh, not, not live too much longer. And they proceed to be caught up initially in a, a we've got to escape because there's a monster loose and the government's coming down. And the initial impetus is, can we get away? But in the process of trying to get away and being thwarted, they learn that there is deeper, darker things in, in their universe. And uh, they lurk right. in the dark spaces. Sounds like the swamp Trump was talking about. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. So. Talk about ending a bureaucracy, right, Angel? Yeah, there you go. I love it. All right, Gerald, you got something? Because I, I, I definitely Yeah, have. yeah. No, I do, yeah. <laughs> uh, my second question for Brian is, uh, can I ask you, Brian, if you've ever written any stories in your comics about invading caravans of illegal immigrants? Because I'll tell you something, they can be, oh, they can be really frightening, and and you need that element to keep people on the edge of their seats, you know? Uh, like, have you seen uh, Tucker Carlson's show lately? Tucker's full name is Tucker Swanson McNear Carlson. His stepmom is the heiress to the Swanson frozen food empire. Because I'll tell you what, we are in scary times. Very true. I, I just log on Facebook and realize I'm living in scary times. But addressing the yeah. specific question about uh, caravans and cages, uh, yeah. volume one of my Templar, I've got heroes. Uh, our hero, Carrick, his entire family gets enslaved and put in cages, and they march them to the evil capital. And, but these are the good guys, and uh, there's going to be a jailbreak at some point, maybe volume two. Hope there's a happy ending. But, all right. Wow, wow. Well, um, well, you know, <laughs> let me get in here. As all, as all things on this show so far, uh, I mean, there's this is only the fourth episode, uh, and, but there seems to be a trend, you know, uh, besides Trump. Uh, all roads lead to, to Art Bell, all right? Uh, and, and you <laughs> seem to have a connection to the late, great Mr. Bell. True story or not, let me hit you with I, this. I, I'm going to hit you with this. You pranked him in, I believe, 1997, calling on a show saying you were a former employee uh, from Area 51 with the government in hot pursuit. Now, I love a good prank call myself. I still do them occasionally when there's nothing on Netflix. But is this true? <laughs> Everything is true except for the fact that it was a prank. Uh, as oh. people who were huge Art Bell fans, as I was back in the yeah. 90s and into the early aughts, uh, he would do, like, he was entertainment. He would have serious guests. He would have guests that were a little off the wall. But one of the things I always respected about Art was no matter how off the wall the guest was, he still treated them on the guest's terms. Then later right. he would have a yep. wild callers to have at it. But he would also do those specialty line nights. Like on this night, um, the, 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 um, the wild card line is now vampire line. And he would answer that line, delete, like, okay, you called the vampire line. I'm going to treat you like you're a vampire. Tell me what it's like to be a vampire in our current modern world. And he would do time, time travelers was one of his, right. uh, his big famous ones. And this one particular night, he did Area 51 caller. So if it, what he asked for was if you have ever worked in Area 51 and could call in with all the secrets. Well, the reason I say I didn't call as a prank, I have viewed it as I am no more real than the time travelers, than the vampires. It's, it's when Art Bell opened his show to theater and I came on as the, hello, uh, Art? Um, yeah, uh, um, uh, Area, Area 51, and, um, uh, the, 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 the dangers that are coming, the disasters, and they could be doing something about all that. And it happened to be the night that either, well, it happened to be the night the satellite went out, and whether you enter the realm where that was planned by art, whether it was accidental, that I have zero control over. I have no knowledge of. All I know is I made the damn phone call. <laughs> and well. I spent the rest of that night in terror 
as I listen to what rolled out on that radio show. I can go that, from one thing that, to you guys. Le, excuse me. That was a cool story. We got finally a cool story. Yeah. Thank you. Dang. That Thank was you. great. I can go from one thing. Art had no idea about the satellites going down until it happened. And that was, you know, spontaneous. It just happened. Like, he, that wasn't the, a part of the shtick. All right. Well, that's 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 just very cool. So anyway, I yeah. know you gotta go because that what we you know we have certain Somebody time constraints with you. So uh, uh, I would like to say, let me jump in and say thank you so very much for coming on our show. I really appreciate it, Angel. Brian, you're you're awesome. Uh, you're you're awesome. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, you know, I would love to work. Whenever you got more stuff, please let me know. And uh, you know, I'd love to uh, you know help uh, promote the books again. Brian Glass. There might be that big news coming up. Yep. Cool. And uh, let's go up the website one more time so the audience can uh, go ahead and check out the website. Brian, JLGlass.com. That's Brian with a Y. B R Y A N J L G L A S S.com. Super, awesome. Gerald. You can just wave. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. The filibuster. Is it time to eliminate the filibuster? Personally, I don't think so. I think we need to keep it in there as an institution that helps, you know, break down what Congress is doing and make sure that one side, like the left side, doesn't get full control because they're kind of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, if you know what I'm saying right now. Too many uh, chickens in the coop make everybody go crazy, and then you don't lay the golden egg. And when is that golden egg back in August? Ain't that right, my friend Gerald? Oh, oh yeah, brother. yeah. Okay, uh, Angel. Let me ask you: Why would we or the Republicans ever approve the removal of one of the tools that has been so important in a keeping uh, keeping America America over right. the last sixty or seventy years? I shudder to think where we would be without the filibuster. I don't think everyone realizes what plans Democrats have for this country. Should they be able to pass legislation with a bare majority, like uh, uh, optional sex change operations at Planned Parenthood clinics, for example, or for those who might be finding uh, just difficulty uh, getting a date? That's not right. Or how about this? Granting voting rights to service animals? I read about this proposal being discussed in liberal circles. And, oh, yeah, 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 one other thing. We cannot let them make Jane Fonda's birthday a national holiday. If yes. we allow a simple majority to pass laws what? in the Senate, then we will have lost our democracy. I know Mitch McConnell has the best interests for, uh, of us all in mind as he continues to fight on to protect this country from radical liberals. And he's Correct. focused on saving us from Joe Biden. And I got to tell you, Angel, without him, well, right now, we'd all, we would all be undergoing mind control efforts to make us into uh, obedient servants of the Zombies. state. Zombies. First, first Zombies. they take away our icons like Mr. Potato Head. And then yes. what's next? Replacing our national anthem with uh, uh, like some rap song. Probably one with a lot of bass, I'm guessing. If it's coming, uh, if the filibuster goes away, it is coming. And you can mark my words on that. I like rap music. I do. I'm not marking your words. It's not happening. No, no. They didn't get marked down just now. No. So and 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 I and, and I like the rap music, uh, Gerald. Does you know? Uh, That's Ice fine, Cube, but it shouldn't Ice be the Cube, national anthem. You know? No, but Ice Cube voted for Trump. Let's not forget. We, we got some uh, some rappers in our stall also that voted for the the Golden Goose. That is true. Yeah, that's you know, very Trump. true. Because they see the light at the end of the tunnel. Marketing moves. All right. Unlike our friend Spud over here, who's still lost in the tunnel somewhere. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, All right. Uh, am I up? Yeah. Right. Let me start with uh, this lazy man's non-talking uh, phone-it-in filibuster, all right, that we have right now, because that's what it is. Uh, from the old days, uh, it's, it's totally changed. Uh, it has to go, and everyone knows what it's been used for. Uh, you know, just another procedural tool uh, for the powerful to maintain their advantage. Uh, you know, like blocking the new voting rights bills. Everybody... You know, sees the news, reads newspapers, so you can see what's going on. Uh, basically, Republicans wet their pants uh, worrying about a larger segment of society voting. Gerald, your dear leader, and yours too, I should say, Angel, uh, said openly on camera that uh, if everyone votes, 
they lose. You guys lose. Uh, it's as simple as that, all right? Uh, and as far as Mitch McConnell goes, yeah, he, he's supposed to be this man that. of tradition. I think, Angel, you mentioned tradition in the Senate and upholding the rules of the Senate. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no doubt. There is no doubt in 2022, if, if they're in control of the Senate again, uh, like 51 to 49, and he wants a bill passed, uh, he's going to kill that filibuster in the first week. Uh, trust me, maybe the first day in session, because the man's more ruthless than Tony Soprano. Uh, he'll do what's necessary to win. So Democrats might as well do... They might as well get it done right now and get rid of it, all right? No, My but God. see, we've got control spite of, of the, the Senate and the House that we've never gotten rid of the filibuster. It's, you know, you it's, had the numbers before. But and we it, didn't do it. And we didn't do it. Um, oh, it's you called, didn't do it? Uh, what what exactly happened to game. the Supreme Court filibuster? Uh, what happened to the so-called, I can't, uh, we can't uh, have a hearing for a Supreme Court nominee in the same year of an election, and yet you confirm one in, in three weeks before an election. But that's another topic. Let me just that say this to Democrats. I want to say this to Democrats out there. Excuse me. But that didn't interfere in the election. And oh, it didn't. Oh, it didn't. No, okay. It didn't. Democrats, though, I got to say this, have always been suckers when it comes to the art of politics. Uh, they continue to get rolled, uh, you know, over and over and over. So my team needs to eat mm. some freaking spinach and Popeye up on the GOP. It's long overdue. All right, I'm done. All right, gentlemen, in closing, we had a fantastic show. Our guest, Brian J.L. Glass, awesome. Mm -hmm. Again, check out his work, uh, the Mice Templars, Furious, Spaced Out. Uh, you know, all kinds of cool stuff coming from him. Uh, really fantastic guy. I had a lot of fun once again. And don't forget, guys, make your voices heard patriotically, peacefully. And coming up, we have to remember August is going to be a big month. Wink, wink. And that's not right, going to be friend. reinstated. That is Come on, Gerald. Take it away. Yeah, the you're behavior. absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And, you know, I may be wrong here, Angel, but I sense you and I are starting to have a little bit of an impact on our radical socialist fellow host here. And he's finally being confronted uh, with uh, oh, the truth outside. Reality. Liberal, the, yeah, that liberal media universe that he gets his information from. I, I know this may be painful at times for you, Spud, but it's in your best interest to be confronted with the truth. Once you accept that you're on the wrong side, I will guarantee you, there's going to be an epiphany for you. You will never really? look at Democrats the same ever again. Not not that they're the enemy. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, they are the enemy. But I still believe we can change a few of their minds one way or another. Well, I kind of think Mike Pence and a bunch of others have tried that forced conversion therapy uh, you're referring to. And it's That's never worked on people, maybe pets. But, you know, um, the number of, in the Repub the numbers, the flat out numbers, people registered as Republicans uh, around this country continue to go down. Uh, it, it's a fraternal order of the insane. That that that's not even debatable now. You guys believe in stuff outside, not just the box, but outside of what a hamster or a gerbil's brain would even consider. I mean, Italy Gate? Seriously? Seriously. In essence, your party is just scary, stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. At least you can find the box. Listen. I'm going to consider that last remark you made as a backdoor acknowledgement that you agree with both Angel and I on the issues, yeah. but you realize you would be shunned by your liberal friends if you agreed with us on this show. I know you, Che Goodman, must keep up the role as defender of communism. Well, I'm not going to lie. Che would have been like a much cooler first name than Spud. Uh, the name thing's on my dad. You know, he had like a good gambling buddy uh, named Spud, but that's another story for another time. But anyway, guys, um, you I'm done here. I'm done here. I am Spud Goodman. Be all that you can be, and I mean that. God bless and ciao. Bye bye. Oh, all right. Well, you know, uh, Spud. You know, uh, uh, Gerald. It's work in progress. You are yeah. my compadre from another madre. Unfortunately, being the only Cuban on the show, I'm Cuban B. You know? Yes, Cuban B. I come at it a little bit different, but hey, it's always fun. We had a great show, a great guest, and like always, man, I will see you guys next time right here on Rabbit Punched. Okay.
Well, there he goes. You know, it seems like it's becoming the custom that I'm the last one to sign off on this program. And I guess that's my uh, dedication to you, the viewers and listeners. Uh, and it keeps my focus on completing the mission here. It's not like I don't have other things to do right now. But if I signed off before the job was complete, well... I sure wouldn't sleep well tonight. There's there's a right time to end a program and not one second sooner. Uh, well, and you know what? I guess that time is now. So until next time, I am Gerald Holcomb, your protector of liberty and freedom. Goodbye. And, uh, uh, honey. Freedom! Yeah, uh, I, I, I could use a nice glass of chocolate milk now that the show's over. <laughs>